We're going to take a look at techniques that can be used to make continuous audio output and then also how you can interact with the VI in order to make uh, some sort of change in a control parameter and hear the results immediately. So it's essentially a real-time and interactive sort of thing. The audio output has a variety of low-level sub-VIs and the three that we're going to make use of I've indicated here. That's the configure, the write, and the clear. So we have one device that configures the sound card. This one basically um, cleans up after we're all done. And then the one in the middle, the write, is the one that actually writes samples to the sound card. And I have some idea in mind of how I need to build the whole thing, so that's why I'm kind of choosing the spacing as I am right now. Taking a little tour of the terminals, we see a variety of, of things to work with. The sound format, I'll create a, a con, uh, control, excuse me, for that. Let's take a look at our front panel. We see that the sound format includes sample rate, number of channels, and the number of bits per channel. And that's normally something we determine once prior to runtime. One of the things I need is the sampling frequency, and so I use the unbundle cluster by name. And then I can pull off my sampling frequency in hertz from that. For my sound generation, I'll just keep it simple and go with a sinusoidal signal source. And this is the one that's called re-entrant, meaning that it can preserve its phase from uh, one loop iteration to the next. So that way we can ensure that we have continuity of our signal going to the output. I'll continue by propagating the error cluster and then creating a default indicator for the error. And this will be important in case for some reason we have the sound uh, configuration goofed up. We need to some, see some kind of reason for that. The task ID is generated by the configure device and then this gets used continuously with, within the loop and it's associated with a particular um, setup for creating sound. Also I'm using shift registers to uh, preserve any kind of error message that gets generated on each loop. We're going to be doing continuous mode instead of uh, finite mode for sampling. And the next thing I'm working on here is to get the number of samples that are sent in each block to the sound writing device. The technique I'm going to use here will be to take the sampling frequency, which was samples per second, and then I will divide that value by some uh, power of convenient power of two, for example, four. And what this means is that my block size now is one quarter of the number of samples per second. And uh, I can basically use this block size as a, as a technique for saying how many samples do I want to generate in each iteration of the loop and send those to the sound card. Block size really should be an integer and so in order to avoid coercion dots showing up later on I will convert block size to uh, an integer. The sinusoidal source, in addition to needing the number of samples, also needs to know the frequency. And I'll go with the default amplitude of one that appears if we leave that disconnected. Frequency, if you check the help on this, is actually normalized frequency. So that's the desired frequency divided by the sampling frequency.
And if you're very observant at this point, you'll notice that I've actually got these turned around, but we'll get that fixed shortly. So this is my desired frequency that I'd like to be able to hear, and that's also in Hertz. Now that control for frequency needs to be inside the loop, so that way I can vary it in a continuous fashion and hear the result. If it was outside the loop, then we would just have one fixed value. I can take the 1D array being produced by my sinusoidal uh, source and attach that directly to my sound right VI. I'll then create a control for my loop and I think we're ready to give this a try. So let's put in a desired frequency of A440, that's concert A. We only need monaural, so I'll change that to one and I'll leave the sampling frequency alone. Now, don't think it takes perfect pitch to know that that's not 440 hertz. And uh, again, after studying the diagram that I have so far, I find that I've improperly done my calculation here. It's, it's supposed to be desired frequency divided by the sampling frequency. So let's get that repaired and try again. Good, that's working fine now. So that's generating the proper frequency. I'm going to do a quick modification on my stop button so I can hit the escape key in order to toggle that button. Just kind of a convenient way to stop the VI when needed. And let me also change my frequency control to a slider with a pointer. And I also would like to have a option to be able to type in a value if needed. So under properties, we can show the digital display. And that way we can either do the interactive slider or we can just simply type in a value. So I'll give a range anywhere from 0 up to 1 kilohertz. All right, let's give it a try. Now generally you hear that it's working but that clicking is kind of obnoxious. Let's try changing this to eight. So that means my block size is smaller by a factor of two. We also hear that the clicking has increased by a factor of two. So that clicking seems to be associated with the block size that we've selected. Now if we look at the control on the sinusoidal source, or the terminal, excuse me, the one designated reset phase defaults to true. Let's try changing that to false. Oh, that's better. There's our 440 again. So what's happening here is that across each loop iteration, if we set that to false, then it does not reset its internal phase, and that way we have continuity of our sinusoid uh, from one iteration to the next. If we make the block size too small, we get clicking no matter what. If you make it too long, associated with the sound capture that I'm doing for this video as well. But I usually find that setting it to somewhere around 4 or 8 seems to work pretty well. Basically you're also controlling how fast the uh, inner loop is looking at your control. So you can kind of do a trade-off between 
the uh, interaction speed, and then the uh, block size that you're generating. Now what I'm illustrating here is supposing something has gone wrong, like the sampling rate was actually accidentally set to zero. Notice that the error does not actually show up until after you stop the loop. So the error is actually generated by the configure device and it goes into the loop, but we don't actually see that appearing until the uh, loop terminates. What I'm illustrating here is how you can make your loop termination condition be either the stop button or if we've detected that the error uh, being propagated by the error cluster actually has its status set. So let's try this again. So I'll do first is use a valid frequency so we have no error. Now notice that when we put an invalid frequency we get an error instantly and the VI does not run at all. So that gives you some idea of how to use the low-level sound.